So this is a thing that's been talked about a little bit lately. What if Kawhi just stayed in Toronto? So I figure why not give my two cents on this. Not just for this previous season and how that would have gone, but looking forward for, say, if Kawhi stayed on the Raptors and how that would look for the Clippers and the Thunder and this whole thing. And, you know, Paul George is somewhere in this whole mix as well. So the obvious thing to look at would just be the basketball stuff first. I mean, for this postseason, if you just picture Kawhi on the Raptors, does that make them the best team in the Eastern Conference? I kind of feel like it. I mean, we saw Miami lose, or we saw Miami beat the Bucks in the way that they did. You assume the Raptors with Kawhi could do that. The Raptors pushed the Celtics all the way to a Game 7, and you figure if Kawhi's there and he's the primary shot taker and then there's not as much responsibility on Siakam, so he can play off of Kawhi a little bit more, which was the perfect role for him, as we saw in last year's playoffs. And we saw from the shot-making of Lowry and Van Fleet and Ibaka and everything, that would be a very difficult team to deal with, and then defensively they would still be awesome. Whether they would retain Danny Green is a question, I don't know. They probably wouldn't because OG didn't really play last year and this year he played a lot and you could kind of view OG as the Danny Green replacement. Although OG was always an exciting young guy for the Raptors, he was just hurt by the time the playoffs began or whatever it was last year, right? So defensively they would still be scary as all hell or maybe even more scary because OG is like a bigger version of Danny Green and more athletic. And to say it again, you know, with Lowry and Van Fleet, we saw that those two could at least push the Celtics to a Game 7. So, with Kawhi there, yeah, I think the Raptors would have beaten them. And the other contrast here with the Clippers is the fact that the Raptors just have a much better infrastructure. Nick Nurse is a better X's and O's guy than Doc Rivers. So the ball would be zipping around more. There'd be more off-ball screens around the Kawhi post-ups and isos and all that good stuff. And, of course, the team would just be better connected. So if they were in a five- or six-point deficit or if they built a big lead and then the other team came back, like what happened with the Nuggets and the Clippers, the Raptors would rally together and figure out ways to beat that, whereas the Clippers just imploded. So as far as this season is concerned, I think if Kawhi stayed in Toronto, I think the Raptors would make the finals again. I think they would be better than Miami. And then they'd probably meet the Lakers in the finals. That would be my prediction. Whether they would win or not, I don't know. I think Kawhi would have to play up to LeBron's level, and then the Raptors would have to do all their defensive stuff in order to slow down AD. And I don't know if they would be able to do it, but it would probably be a good series. I think we'd agree on that one. Now, I will get to the Clippers and the Thunder, but what I'm thinking about now is the long term for Toronto if Kawhi stayed. So I guess for for the sake of this, do we just give Kawhi like a five-year contract? I mean, he signed a two plus one with the Clippers. I don't really know what to do with this. We'll just say it's a huge extension. Kawhi is a Raptor for the foreseeable future, potentially the rest of his career, right? Well, Kawhi is 29. So the Raptors would probably be title contenders for the next five seasons or so. Now, I guess there's a chance that his knee forces an early retirement out of him, but I don't know. So, that would be the first thing with the Raptors. I mean, I guess under that scenario, they'd probably keep Lowry for as long as they could. Because under, you know, with where it is right now with the Raptors, I wouldn't be shocked if Lowry was traded. I don't think he will be, but I wouldn't be shocked about it either, right? Whereas I think if Kawhi was still there, they would definitely be like, we got to hold on to Lowry for as long as he's good. Siakam would have room to grow into whatever he's going to be besides what he's already grown into. With Kawhi still holding down the number one option thing, would they just break the bank to re-sign Van Fleet at that point? Yeah, maybe. You'd have to make sure you stayed under the luxury tax for all this stuff. I think Toronto would potentially get a little more reckless with trading draft picks as well. Whereas, with the actual situation they have, there's a lot of uncertainty. they got a lot of contracts up, and I talked about this already, so I don't want to dive into it too much. And then if you just think about like the Eastern Conference over that span of time, if Kawhi was still there, I mean, you're talking about the Bucks, the Celtics, the Nets, the Raptors, the Heat, the Sixers, uh, 
Indiana can be in there as well. Granted, this is kind of how it is anyway, but Toronto would be better in this scenario, of course. And Kawhi would be the perfect guy to have versus Tatum and Jalen and Giannis and KD and Kyrie and Ben Simmons, that whole mess. So that's what it's like for them. If we think about for the Clippers, so before they got Kawhi and before they then traded for Paul George, because that's how it really happened, right? It was Pat Bev, Lou Will, Montrez, Shea, Gallo. That was kind of the team, pretty much. And it's actually pretty wild to think about what they would have done. Because it was obvious that they had cap space. That was like a whole thing going into it. And if they don't sign Kawhi, what really happens? I mean, it was the most obvious thing. They had Clippers people go into Raptors games and that whole spiel. But yeah, if just none of that happens, I mean, is there a chance that they could have signed Kevin Durant? I don't think it's insane to believe if KD wanted to stay in California and all that. Now, does that mean they would have had to pull a similar thing to get Kyrie Irving as well? Perhaps, but if if they truly believed that they could have done it, they clearly have proven that they would do it. So, maybe KD and Kyrie would have ended up with the Clippers. Would they have signed Kemba Walker? Maybe, but they would have had to shuffle out some of the smaller guards that they have. Did they have a chance at Jimmy Butler? It seemed like Jimmy kind of wanted to go to Miami all along. But maybe the Clippers could have convinced him. I don't totally know. Although I do think that the chances of KD and Kyrie going there, I actually think that could have been pretty possible based on what happened with Kawhi and PG. Where maybe the same thing happens where KD commits and then he's like, well, get Kyrie. And then they trade all their picks for Kyrie. And then, well, there you go. But perhaps knowing that KD would be gone for one year, maybe that would sway them not to do it, but probably not. It's still Kevin Durant, right? If it wouldn't have been that, then I just don't know if they would have gotten any other types of free agents. And maybe there's a chance the Clippers would have just gone into this season as kind of what they were last year. You know, a good team that might make the postseason and just kind of roll with that until some star player becomes available. Keep your cap space open and keep swinging until you eventually get the guy. Now, while this would have been happening... They would have had to decide on Gallo's contract. Also, Shea would be improving throughout this. I mean, Shea jumped up to 20 points a game this year in OKC, and perhaps he doesn't get that high. I don't know. Maybe he's like 15, 16 without Chris Paul or whatever, creating shots for him, but still would have seen some improvement. So, yeah, I guess the Clippers, they they would have been in a good spot, but not in a... Great spot, although now that their spot doesn't look as great because of the picks they've traded. And obviously we know how this postseason went for them. But yeah, I guess to think about this for OKC as well, because I think they matter in this whole thing. I mean, Paul George was traded on July 10th. Russell Westbrook was traded on July 11th. I'm assuming that they had the Westbrook trade already building up before the Paul George trade actually happened. Because the Paul George trade was like super silent. Nobody knew about it. So I guess now I think about if the Thunder did not have the Clippers coming at them with some sign-and-trade thing, if we're going to give you Shea and Gallo and every draft pick in existence, is there a chance that they just run it back with Paul George and Russell Westbrook for another season and try to shore up the roster a little bit and just see how good they can be? I mean, their starting five probably would be Westbrook, PG, Steven Adams, Jeremy Grant, and I guess eventually Lou Dort. I don't know. I mean, that team was really good on defense. Their offense wasn't too great. They would still have Dennis Schroeder. Whether he makes as much of an improvement as he did this season, I don't know. Maybe that team is a second-round team. Maybe in some scenario they're a conference finals team, but there's also a decent chance that they're a first-round exit team as they were to the Blazers that season. It's kind of interesting to think about. It's, It's sort of like a chicken or the egg scenario where it's like, did OKC just decide beforehand we're just we're going to trade PG and Westbrook this offseason and that's that? Or was it like, well, this offer for PG is way too good for us to pass up and we should probably trade Westbrook while we're at it? I don't really know. But I guess depending on which one it is, that affects this what-if scenario because there's a chance that PG and Westbrook just end up getting traded anyway but to different teams. 
But even so, there might have only been one team willing to trade for Russ given his money, and we saw what happened with the Rockets. So then it becomes, what happens to the Rockets? What happens to Chris Paul? Well, maybe Chris Paul ends up somewhere else. But then again, his stock was not as good as it is now. And I also can't think of the team that would have traded for him. It's tough to remember everybody's salary situations from a year ago and stuff. The one team I thought of was the Jazz, but they traded for Conley a month before Chris Paul was traded to the Thunder. According to a Bleacher Report article that I'm looking at, it said that Chris Paul demanded a trade and James Harden had a him or me demand. So, I guess he just had to be out no matter what. And You know, if OKC has decided they're just going to roll it back, then they probably don't trade for Chris Paul. Unless they just would have done it anyway, because they were like, yeah, you know what? We're just going to roll with CP and Paul George for this upcoming season. Because we're just assuming that Paul George has not been traded in this scenario. It's tough to know. You really don't know. But we'll just say Chris Paul ends up somewhere else, and I don't know what the hell happens with that. And then OKC is just uh, running it back for another season, and I don't know what happens there. So I guess that's my what-if scenario. Basically, the Raptors would be title contenders for like the next five years if Kawhi stays. The Clippers are a pretty good team looking to get a star player somehow. Maybe they get it in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. I'm just guessing that Paul George is not traded from OKC. And then Chris Paul's got to get traded somewhere else. And then that team, whoever that would be, gets better. It's kind of fun to go down the NBA spider web of this stuff. Anyway, that'll do it for me. If you made it this far, like and subscribe. And yeah, I will be reacting to Celtics Heat Game 3 tonight. I did not react to Lakers Nuggets game one because there just wasn't much to talk about. So that's it.